the Yellowstone super volcano, it's a caldera volcano. That's the caldera of a volcano, like this Yellowstone thing, super volcano that is a continent killer. And it blows every six to 800,000 years and everyone dies. Beneath the breathtaking vistas of Yellowstone National Park, a lurking giant stirs, its power echoing through ancient legends and modern seismic readings. As millions marvel at its natural wonders, Joe Rogan, a renowned podcaster, unveils the chilling truth about this iconic landscape. What if Yellowstone's beauty is a cover for a global threat waiting to erupt? Dive into the raw power of nature as we unravel the hidden events shaping the future of this iconic park. Don't miss it. Yellowstone National Park, often hailed as the crown jewel of the U.S. National Park System, spans a vast expanse of wilderness covering over 2.2 million acres. Its picturesque landscapes and pristine waters have captivated millions, including famed podcaster Joe Rogan. But beneath this serene beauty lies a secret that has experts, and even Rogan himself, on edge. What is it about this beloved national treasure that's sounding alarms? At the core of Yellowstone's allure are its geothermal wonders, powered by an intricate underground plumbing system. This complex network of magma chambers, geysers, and hot springs showcases the Earth's volatile nature. But what's the driving force behind this system? Approximately six miles beneath the park's surface rests a massive supervolcano, the Yellowstone Caldera. This dormant giant has a history marked by cataclysmic eruptions. Over the past 2.1 million years, it has erupted thrice, each event dwarfing the Mount St. Helens eruption of 1980 by a thousand times. And while it's been silent for 640,000 years, recent seismic data and studies hint that this giant might just be stirring. The iconic Old Faithful geyser, with its predictable eruptions, has long been a symbol of Yellowstone's geothermal might but it's just one of the thousands of geothermal features that dot the park. The Grand Prismatic Spring, with its radiant colors, offers a surreal glimpse into the Earth's interior. Its vibrant hues, resulting from a combination of mineral-rich waters and microbial mats, are a visual treat. But beyond these well-trodden sites lie lesser-known geothermal wonders. Hidden geysers that erupt in solitude, secluded hot springs that bubble away in obscurity, and fumaroles that hiss out steam and gases each tell a tale of the Earth's inner workings. But what if these geothermal features were more than just natural wonders? What if they were harbingers, indicators of something far more ominous brewing beneath the surface? While the surface of Yellowstone captivates with its mesmerizing geothermal displays, it's essential to delve deeper to understand the true force behind these wonders. Have you ever pondered the sheer force required to power Yellowstone's geothermal wonders? The answer lies deep below, in the caldera's magma chamber. This vast underground reservoir is not just a simple pool, it's a complex, layered structure. The chamber, filled with molten rock, gases, and minerals, extends for miles beneath the park's surface. Its contents are under immense pressure, constantly moving and interacting, creating a dynamic and ever-changing environment. But it's not just the size of this magma chamber that's alarming. It's the history of its eruptions. Over millennia, this chamber has been the source of massive volcanic events, leaving behind evidence of its powerful and sometimes cataclysmic nature. The Yellowstone caldera has erupted three times in previous history, with each event being cataclysmic in scale. To put this into perspective, the most recent eruption, which occurred approximately 640,000 years ago, released over 240 cubic miles of ash, rock, and pyroclastic materials. This eruption was so immense that it created the Lava Creek Tuff, a layer of volcanic rock and ash that can be found across a significant portion of the western United States. But what does this mean for us today? In a landscape where every subtle change could be a precursor to something monumental, there's a significant anomaly that's been observed. There's been an alarming uptick in earthquake swarms in the region, a phenomenon where a series of earthquakes strike in a short period. While earthquake swarms are not uncommon in Yellowstone, the frequency and intensity of these events have led to heightened monitoring and research. But it's not just the earthquakes that have raised eyebrows. Did you know that the ground above the Yellowstone caldera has been rising at an accelerated rate? 
This phenomenon, known as ground uplift, is caused by the influx of magma into the chamber below. While ground uplift is a natural process in volcanic areas, the rate at which it's occurring in Yellowstone has caught experts' attention as they attempt to look into the phenomena. The ground beneath our feet is stirring, and the world is watching with bated breath. Enter Joe Rogan, the famed podcaster and commentator, who recently made waves with a shocking announcement about Yellowstone. But what did he say that has everyone talking? Rogan shared news of the increased seismic activity near Yellowstone National Park with his 9.6 million followers on Instagram. He humorously remarked that humanity is two catastrophes away from an alien invasion and that 2020 feels like 70 years rolled into six months. While Rogan's comments were made in jest, they underscored the very real concerns many have about the park's volcanic activity. But let's dissect the implications of Rogan's comments. At the core, his announcement has refocused public attention on Yellowstone's seismic patterns. Just in the days leading up to his post, the U.S. Geological Survey documented a series of earthquakes, with the most potent reaching a magnitude of 3.1. This isn't an isolated incident. Over the past month, the region experienced 34 quakes, each ranging from 1.6 to 3.1 in magnitude. These figures are not just mere statistics. They paint a picture of one of the most seismically active regions in the U.S. On average, Yellowstone records a staggering 700 to 3,000 earthquakes annually. But what do experts have to say about this? Is there cause for concern, or is this just another example of the park's regular seismic activity? Several geologists and experts have weighed in on the matter. While earthquake swarms are common in the continental U.S., the proximity of these swarms to Yellowstone has many experts on edge. The fear is that these swarms could be a precursor to the big one, a catastrophic earthquake that could have devastating consequences not just for the U.S., but for the entire world. The scientific community has been abuzz with discussions on this very topic. Earthquake swarms, especially in the continental U.S., aren't uncommon. However, when these swarms occur near Yellowstone, it's bound to raise eyebrows. Some experts fear that this could be the early warning signs of the big one, a monumental earthquake that could wreak havoc on a global scale. Yet the consensus isn't unanimous. A segment of the geological community believes that while the increased seismic activity is certainly worth monitoring, it doesn't necessarily signal an impending super-eruption. They point to historical data, noting that Yellowstone has seen similar seismic patterns in the past, all of which didn't culminate in a major eruption. The debate continues, but one thing is clear. The world is watching Yellowstone closely, hoping to decipher its next move. To truly grasp the gravity of the situation, it's essential to delve deeper into the nature of supervolcanoes. Unlike typical volcanoes, which can be devastating in their own right, supervolcanoes operate on an entirely different scale. These are massive volcanic structures with the capability to produce eruptions that dwarf anything we've seen in recorded history. In fact, a supervolcano can only be classified as such when its volcanic center has had an eruption of magnitude 8 on the Volcano Explosivity Index, meaning the volume of deposits for that eruption is greater than 1,000 cubic kilometers. But how do super eruptions influence our planet's climate? Historical records and geological evidence suggest a potential link between super eruptions and significant climate anomalies. The connection lies in the sheer volume of particulates these eruptions release. When a supervolcano erupts, it doesn't just spew out lava, it releases vast amounts of ash and sulfur dioxide. These materials rise into the atmosphere, where they can linger for years. The ash and sulfur dioxide particles scatter and reflect sunlight, reducing the amount that reaches the Earth's surface. The aftermath of such an event isn't just a year without a summer. It's years, possibly even decades of cooler temperatures, failed crops, and widespread famine. To give a historical perspective, the eruption of the Toba supervolcano in Indonesia around 74,000 years ago is believed to have triggered a significant global cooling event with profound implications for ecosystems and early human populations. But what drives these super eruptions? The answer lies deep beneath our feet in the Earth's mantle. Contrary to what one might imagine, the mantle isn't a rigid, unchanging layer. Picture instead a vast, churning expanse of semi-molten rock, 
constantly in motion, much like the currents of our oceans. Within this dynamic layer, there are areas of intense activity. Hotter, buoyant rock columns, termed as mantle plumes, occasionally rise from the mantle's deeper regions, pushing their way upwards. As these plumes near the Earth's crust, they exert immense pressure, causing the crust to deform. It might bulge, stretch, or in some cases, even fracture. This deformation can lead to the creation of magma chambers, which are essentially vast reservoirs of molten rock. These chambers are the ticking time bombs behind supervolcanoes. The relationship between the mantle plumes, the Earth's crust, and these magma chambers is a delicate dance of geological forces. Even slight shifts or changes in one can trigger reactions in the others, potentially culminating in an eruption. It's this intricate balance that scientists study meticulously, aiming to predict and understand the behavior of supervolcanoes. But let's narrow our focus a bit. When we talk about Yellowstone, a significant factor comes into play, the deep magma plume feeding its caldera. This isn't just any magma plume, it's a lifeline that continuously supplies the caldera's magma chamber with molten rock. Research suggests that the characteristics of this plume, its size, depth, and composition, are pivotal in determining the caldera's behavior. Some findings even hint that Yellowstone's feeding plume could be far more extensive than we once believed, possibly stretching hundreds of kilometers into the mantle. If this is accurate, the implications are staggering. The potential for a cataclysmic eruption could be far greater than any worst-case scenarios we've envisioned. Transitioning from the depths of the Earth to the surface of Yellowstone, there's another enigma that has both puzzled and concerned scientists the unexplained animal die-offs. Over time, there have been alarming instances where birds, fish, and other wildlife have been found dead in specific areas of the park. The cause? While the exact reasons remain a subject of research, there's a prevailing theory. Yellowstone, with its geothermal wonders, also releases toxic gases. These gases, which can be a mix of carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and others, can sometimes accumulate in certain pockets of the park. When animals, unaware of the invisible danger, wander into these zones, they can be overwhelmed by the toxic concentrations, leading to these tragic die-offs. But what if there was an unexpected way to make sense of these strange occurrences? An answer might lie with the Native American tribes that have long called Yellowstone their home, and their legends offer a unique lens through which we can view the park's geothermal activity. For these indigenous tribes, the park's geothermal features were not just scientific curiosities, but were deeply intertwined with their spiritual beliefs and cultural narratives. One of the most intriguing aspects of their legends is the recurring theme of massive explosions or eruptions. Tales passed down through generations speak of spirits and deities residing in Yellowstone's geothermal features. Legends of Napi, the creator, molding the land and resting by a geyser are common. But there's another narrative that stands out. A time when the skies turned to ash, waters transformed into flames, and the ground shook with unparalleled fury. Could these tales be echoing memories of a time when the Yellowstone caldera awakened, reminding all of its formidable power? In addition to these tales, there's another layer of history etched into the very rocks of Yellowstone. Petroglyphs, or ancient rock carvings made by indigenous tribes, these petroglyphs often depict animals, celestial bodies, and sometimes intricate patterns that are believed to represent geothermal features. Some researchers speculate that these carvings might be more than just artistic expressions. They could be visual records of the tribe's experiences and observations of the park's geothermal activity. The presence of spirals, which are often associated with water and whirlpools in Native American symbolism, alongside depictions of erupting geysers or plumes of smoke, lends credence to this theory. These silent testimonies etched in stone could potentially bridge the gap between legend and reality, offering tangible evidence of the tribe's deep-rooted connection with Yellowstone's volatile landscape. But what's the connection between these legends and the actual geological events? Is it possible that these stories, passed down orally through countless generations, are not mere myths, but historical accounts of past eruptions? Some researchers believe that these legends and cultural beliefs might be preserving memories of actual events. After all, the caldera's previous eruptions have been incredibly disastrous. 
Such an event would undoubtedly leave an indelible mark on the collective memory of the people living in the region. But here's a thought to ponder. If these legends are indeed based on real events, what do they tell us about the future? Are there clues hidden within these tales that can help us predict or prepare for a potential eruption? While it's tempting to dismiss these legends as mere folklore, it's essential to approach them with an open mind. After all, many ancient civilizations had an uncanny ability to observe and interpret natural phenomena with remarkable accuracy. Their deep connection to the land and keen observational skills often allowed them to predict events that seemed inexplicable to outsiders. After the echoes of Native American legends, we must ground ourselves in the present and examine the current state of Yellowstone National Park. But what does the latest research and data tell us about the park's geothermal activity? And most importantly, when will Yellowstone erupt again? The three massive eruptions previously occurred at Yellowstone were of magnitude 8 on the Volcano Explosivity Index, which is also why it came to be classified as a supervolcano. The most recent of these, the Lava Creek eruption, occurred approximately 640,000 years ago and was responsible for creating the current caldera. However, since then, the caldera has seen approximately 80 non-explosive eruptions, producing lava flows that filled much of the caldera. Now, while the history of eruptions might sound intimidating, it's crucial to put it into perspective. The intervals between these massive eruptions are not consistent, and there's no pattern to suggest another eruption is due anytime soon. In fact, the current volcanic activity at Yellowstone, including the geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles, is a result of these past eruptions and not necessarily an indicator of an impending one. But what about the odds? To reiterate, the chance of a massive eruption at Yellowstone in any given year is minuscule, about 0.00014% to be exact. To put it in perspective, you're more likely to win the lottery or get struck by lightning than witness a cataclysmic eruption at Yellowstone in your lifetime. However, the potential consequences of such an eruption, no matter how unlikely, warrant vigilance. If the supervolcano were to erupt, the consequences would undeniably be far-reaching and multifaceted. While most people might first think of the immediate devastation caused by lava flows and pyroclastic surges, the aftermath of such an eruption could have global implications that last for years, if not decades. Firstly, the immediate vicinity of the eruption would witness unparalleled destruction. Lava flows, while relatively slow-moving, can incinerate everything in their path, from forests to infrastructure. Pyroclastic flows, which are fast-moving currents of hot gas and volcanic matter, can reach temperatures of up to 1,000 degrees Celsius and move at speeds of up to 700 kilometers per h. These flows can obliterate entire towns and cities, leaving no chance for escape for those in their path. But the devastation doesn't stop at the eruption site. The sheer volume of ash ejected into the atmosphere can have catastrophic effects on a much larger scale. This ash can blanket vast areas, making the air unbreathable and contaminating water sources. It can also severely disrupt air travel, as we've seen in past eruptions like the 2010 eruption of Ejafjallajökull in Iceland. However, one of the most concerning consequences of a supereruption is the potential for a volcanic winter. The sulfur dioxide released during the eruption can form sulfate aerosols in the atmosphere, which reflect sunlight away from the Earth. This can lead to a significant drop in global temperatures, and its effects could be devastating. Crop failures could become widespread, leading to food shortages and famine. The altered climate could disrupt ecosystems, leading to the extinction of many species. Moreover, the cooler temperatures could persist for years, fundamentally altering the Earth's climate for generations. Economic repercussions would also be profound. Global trade could be disrupted, leading to economic downturns and potential collapses. The cost of rebuilding and recovery in the affected areas would be astronomical, placing a significant burden on both national and international economies. As such, Understanding and preparing for the potential consequences of a super-eruption is not just a regional concern, but a global imperative. Recognizing the importance of monitoring and understanding the caldera's behavior, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory was established in 2001. This observatory, a collaboration between the U.S. Geological Survey, the University of Utah, and the National Park Service, continuously monitors geological activity in the region. 
The data collected helps scientists understand the volcano's behavior and provides early warning signs of any significant changes. Given the unpredictable nature of geothermal activity, these authoritative bodies have implemented several precautionary measures. Monitoring stations equipped with seismographs and GPS are scattered throughout the park, providing real-time data on ground movements and seismic activity. Additionally, scientists regularly conduct studies to assess the chemical composition of the park's geothermal features, as changes in these can indicate shifts in the underlying magma. For visitors, the park offers guidelines to ensure safety. Staying on designated boardwalks and trails, avoiding geothermal areas during periods of high seismic activity, and adhering to park advisories are all essential. After all, while Yellowstone's geothermal wonders are mesmerizing, they are also reminders of the powerful forces at work beneath our feet. Thanks for watching this episode of Beyond Discovery. Don't miss the video you see on your screen, you won't believe it.